In this video, we're gonna build your first flush photography kit and I'm not gonna recommend to you any sort of bounce umbrella or shoot through umbrella, even though if I think they got the time and place when and how to use them. But I also do think if you build your first flush photography kit, you're gonna look very soon into different modifiers because shoot through umbrellas and bounce umbrellas have their limitation like every other modifier as well. So without further saying, this is what I would do if I would need to build my first flush photography kit again. When starting out, deciding between a flush and a mini strobe can be quite a tricky challenge because you don't know where your challenge of flush photography will bring you. Nowadays, looking back, I would decide to go with the flush again. For the simple reason you got more flexibility with the flush than with the mini strobe such as like a AD200. A flush can be used on camera or off camera and when it comes down to what sort of flush you're trying to choose or the brand you want to use then you definitely came across at some point the Godox brand or also in the UK called Pixar Pro. Those flushes are fairly inexpensive on average a speed light costs you 120 quid, runs off four AA batteries and produces a power output between 40 to 60 watts, which definitely is enough to get you started in a studio or even outdoors. Of course, those flushes have also some sort of limitation. You won't be able to fully overpower the sun on a bright sunny day. But if you shoot in the evening, as an example, having a speed light to fill in some shadows is definitely possible. After we did decide to go with the speed light for the most flexibility when it comes down to our flush photography kit, we need a light stand because we need to mount somewhere the speed light on that we can actually use it off camera flash. You could hold it as well occasionally and just fire it freehand, but the light stand is always recommended. Right now, if you want to shoot portraits as an example, between the light stands, there's definitely a huge variation of light stands out. You can have a budget friendly light stand, which costs around 30 pounds. Those light stands are fantastic in a sense. They are cheap, they're easy to use, and they're doing a fantastic job for what it is and what you pay for. The downside is that they are fairly light, flimsy, and also very sensitive when it comes down to falling over. So definitely you need to consider where do you want to use your strobe or flush. Are you planning on shooting more outdoors or indoors? When you shoot indoors, those cheap light stands doing a fantastic job and you definitely can use them without worrying that they're falling every single time over because it's not really windy indoors. If you're planning to shoot more outdoors, then you definitely should consider to buy a heavy duty or even a C stand. The C stand got the benefit of having a wide spread of leg and gives you more flexibility and more st stability when it comes down to shooting flush outdoors. However, as your first light stand, I would recommend using a heavy duty light stand. Those light stands are somewhere in between a C stand and a budget friendly light stand. The spread of leg is usually a bit wider. The bars or poles from a light stand are a bit thicker and they overall hold a bit more weight than an average cheap budget friendly light stand. Enterprise wise, they sell between 30 to 50 pounds as well. So definitely recommend it as your first light stand. Use the medium priced heavy duty light stand and it will probably do a fantastic job for what you're planning on doing. After we have decided to go with our speed light as our first strobe, we have decided on our light stand that we're choosing a medium priced light stand, a heavy duty one. We need to mount the speed light somehow onto our light stand. And here comes a Bowens mount S bracket into place. Highly recommended to get a Bowens mount bracket. Bowens mount is widely spread and gives you a lot of flexibility later on when choosing your modifier or you want to add different modifiers into your kit. A Bowens mount S bracket got several benefits to it. You can mount an umbrella to it. You can mount several different modifiers to it as mentioned already, but also it is flexible that you can change the angle of your bracket later for the mounting option or when mounting your modifier onto it to change the angle how you want to position your light when using your stroke. So we have chosen three out of our four things we need to build our off-camera flush or flash photography kit in general. We have chosen our speed light for flexibility because you can use it on camera and off camera. We have chosen a medium heavy duty light stand 
and we have chosen the bones mount bracket for the most flexibility when it comes down to modifiers because it's widely spread. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I don't recommend using shoot through umbrellas because I found you grow very quick out of them. And that's just my personal opinion. I used to have shoot through umbrellas and they're done fantastic for what it is. They diffuse your light and you use them on location, but they are also very sensitive when it comes down to wind and they always get pulled out of a bracket when it's too windy. But also I don't think you have as much flexibility when it comes down to a shoot through umbrella when controlling a light. If I would look into a modifier again, in my first modifier, I would choose a softbox between 60 to 80 centimeters. It can be a umbrella softbox, it can be a beauty dish softbox like this one, which is double diffused as well, which gives you even a softer light. For the simple reason, I would choose a softbox because it will give me more flexibility when it comes down to controlling light later on. Let's say I would like to shoot some low key images. I have the edges of a softbox where I can control the light. Right now, if you mount your softbox onto your bones mount bracket, your bones mount bracket is flexible that you can control the angle of your softbox. This means also you got more control over the light where the light will hit when you fire the flush. So this is definitely my recommendation when it comes down to a modifier, get a 60 to 80 centimeter softbox as your first modifier. And I think it will last you longer than a shoot through umbrella. Those softboxes come in different interiors, such as like a silver interior or a white interior. They come double diffused, single diffused. It really depends on your budget as well, how much you would like to spend for your first softbox. Let's take a newer uh, 55 centimeter softbox. I think it is a beauty dish softbox, double diffused, white interior. And I think it did cost around 50 pounds. I think this was a good investment back in the days. And this softbox is already a couple of years old and still goes strong. So with that said, speed light as your first strobe, a heavy duty light stand, medium priced, a S bracket or bones mount S bracket for the most flexibility and widest range of modifiers available and a 60 to 80 centimeter softbox. And I think this sort of beginner kit will last you a very long time. And if you got any further questions, let me know in the comments, let me know what you think. And with that said, take care. I'm gonna see you in the next one.